Thank you. That's the uh, first standing ovation I think I've ever had. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little late getting here. I forgot my ID and couldn't get in, so it took a while. <laughs> Before we get started here, uh, this is something I've incorporated to every speech I've, I've ever made, well, recently, I should say, is uh, serving in the Navy myself, being a veteran active in my local VFW, American Legion chapter. Uh, that's how I actually gained my interest in politics. And the one thing I like to do is recognize while we're really assembled here today, uh, and it's for the veterans serving us now and in the future, and I also would like to ask uh, any veterans that are here, my fellow veterans, to stand up and be recognized and applaud. Thank you for your service. And if you're from Vietnam era, welcome home. For those of you that haven't met me, I am the co-chair here with uh, Lieutenant Governor Rick Sheehy. Uh, I want to thank, um, thank you and, uh, and the Nebraskans gathered here. Thank you for gathering because this is very important that we're here today and the work that we do is extremely important for us to emphasize the principles that we all believe in. I was born and raised in eastern Nebraska, a little town uh, called Nickerson. It's still there. I call it the affluent suburb just north of Fremont of about 250 people. It's a town, though, just like all of Nebraska, strong work, work ethic, strong values, and, and that's something that I think I've gained uh, from growing up in Nebraska. And that's when I graduated from Loganview High School back in the late 80s. I decided that uh, I could have went to college. I decided I'd wait, and I'd go into the Navy. So I went into the Navy and became a search and rescue swimmer. Uh, it was peacetime at that point, so... Uh, that seemed like a safe choice, but then uh, the Persian Gulf War started, and I was like, wow, I figured that one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself in the Persian Gulf War, the first Persian Gulf War, and that's, a, that's an eye-opener, and that'll change your perspective on many things in life, uh, seeing stuff like that going down, seeing the way people are held down uh, in other nations, and people seeking their freedom and wanting to hold on to their freedom, uh, and so that meant a lot to me and has really shaped me as a public employee. After my service, I came back, graduated from uh, Nebraska College, Wayne State College, and took a few jobs like many people. Many of you get out of college, get out of high school, you kick around a little bit looking for jobs, and I kind of felt I had an entrepreneurial spirit. And I started a temporary medical staffing company. It's RTG Medical. Um, I've talked to a few physicians out there, a few nurses. Uh, give me a call. Uh, we staff people uh, around the state and uh, around the nation. But we grew that uh, from two employees. It started out of an apartment office, and uh, we've grown that to 300 employees across the nation. And, you know, it's a modest effort, but it's something I'm proud of. It created it in my own apartment, and, uh, and it's something that you kind of look back on and that how tough it is to start a business. And we were recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the 500 fastest growing companies in the nation, uh, two times actually. Um, so we, we continue to be proud of that and understand that the government is really encroaching um, on our business quite a bit. I tell you this to demonstrate the very personal importance of freedom and liberty in my own life. Uh, and like most of you gathered here, I believe in the principles. Those principles are in very, very serious jeopardy. Our gathering really cannot happen at a more critical point in our nation and for the Nebraska Republican Party. Everyone in this room understands the stakes of this election. We simply cannot afford another four years of Barack Obama, put stately. As a veteran and small business owner, I'm motivated by this administration's assault on our economic freedom and personal liberty. I believe that you too are motivated. We've got to be motivated to end President Obama's willful ignorance of growing illegal the, excuse me, the growing illegal immigration crisis in our country. Motivated to stop President Obama's persecution of state's sovereign right to protect the integrity of elections through something called voter ID laws. It will be reintroduced, by the way. <laughs> 
motivated to stop crippling, crippling tax increases, burdensome regulations that have resulted in President Obama's federal health care law. I believe your vote for Mitt Romney and for Deb Fisher will help change the direction in Washington. And don't forget about Congressman Fortenberry and Smith and our Congress congressional delegate. We need them as well. But we must also have your energy, enthusiasm to build a stronger coalition of conservatives in the Nebraska legislature, which I serve. Too often, common sense conservative ideas to protect our elections, stop illegal immigration, prevent tax increases, are met with oppositions from liberals and, frankly, our fair share of people I call rhinos in the legislature. Happens once in a while. The Nebraska Republican Party needs help to win the races at the state level, to elect conservatives who believe in freedom and liberty, to elect conservatives that will support the strong leadership and common sense of the governing we've had under Governor Dave Heineman and Lieutenant Governor Rick Sheehy. We must come together as conservatives, as Republicans, as Nebraskans to do what's right, what's necessary to protect the principles that make this the greatest state and the greatest nation on the earth. Now is the time to put aside our differences, to focus on the common goals. I do believe we all share common goals here, to protect our freedoms, to promote economic liberty, and most of, to win in November. <laughs>